Welcome back, everybody. So in the last video, we got a lot of information about Kylas. Kylas is sort of Danny's chosen one, which Danny is sort of like the main villain in the whole series. The the name and everything, like I, I kind of wish I could change the name now, but I can't because it's just sort of like most of the characters. I guess some of the characters, okay, maybe quite a few of the characters have like human-like names. I just feel like Danny is like way too human-like for his character, but uh, he actually, the character Danny came about because um, of a dream I had when I was maybe in high school and the sort of character in the dream that I had, it was sort of like a reoccurring continuation dream and it happened all in the same night and it was pretty cool. Uh, it's a long story but I just decided to make him into a lion character and he's actually changed quite a bit over the years but he kind of so, sort of a final form now I'm going to kind of keep it the way it is. And the comic, if you read my comic, I'll put a link in the description for the comic if you want to check it out. Um, the comic takes place after this game and after there's another story in between. I do want to rewrite the story because it was wrote a long time ago. Kind of it meant to be something like this. So anyways, yeah, we found out about that. Uh, we found out a little bit about Anthony and how he got his scar and what happened. So let's start. After Zia got his food, the three began their walk back home. Excellent food, if I do say so myself. That's because you caught it? Of course. What else will I say? Security was fantastic. Not a single king in sight. Oh, tell him to shut up. Just ignore him. He's just happy he got to be part of it. The three continued to walk home as Z continued to praise all his own hard work and not anything that Kylas or Antony had done. But I'll try and get through this without too much. It was late when Lavar, Zane, and Z arrived home that night. Unlike any other time, Lavar knew from the very beginning something was not going to be right. Oh no. Dad is watching us. Huh? Where? Look up there. Oh great. I think we should just not go back. Z's posture was not his normal puffed up prideful look. Well, I have to go back. He always hates me, so I don't really care. This may be the end of us, guys. He might just kick us out tonight. I hope he does. The three continued their walk back home, all three of them eyeing the king as they went. Lavar, The voice of the king shook the cave. The king had a bad temper and was really well known. While he was often good to those he cared about, those that pissed him off often suffered greatly. Lavar was no stranger to this. This was just another night for him. What have I told you about going out at night? Lavar chose to say nothing to this. He could not win this argument, even if he was right. The king had been on his and Zane's back since he arrived as a cub. Don't pee in the water hole, don't chase the meerkats, don't ride the ostriches, don't slide down the side of the cave and jump on the lionesses while they're resting. Basically anything fun in his eyes was never allowed and almost every other night ended in the king being mad at him for something. Turn around and face me, you arrogant brat. Lavar took a deep breath and turned around to face the king without even a shred of emotion for the trouble he was in now. What were you doing out so late with my son tonight? What does it matter? It wasn't Makoba. Zane should be allowed to do whatever he wants without you bothering him. What do you mean? He is my son and he will follow my rules. Well, good thing I'm not your son and I will do what I want. He returns safe. What is the problem? The problem is he is not to be hanging out with someone like you. He will do what he wants, as will I. We are old enough. Let him make up his, his mind. I do not need you anymore. You think you can leave this pride and live on your own, do you? What is going on here, your highness? Okay, remember how I told you back like several videos ago that there are certain scenes that have... Uh, that 
if you do like all evil, all good, or neutral, um, you'll get a different little scene. Um, most of the other ones in the previous parts are going to be just like one-liners or two-liners or something like that based on how, uh, how you're reacting to things. This one actually has quite a few different sentences uh, between the characters, so we'll see sort of what we're getting. I think we're still going to get the neutral one, which is what most people get, because we have done some good things, so therefore we're not like fully evil on this, but it might. I can't remember if this one here, because I think this is the last major one that shows sort of be a little bit off, because we're only a little bit off of the evil at this point. Your brother is a brat. In the background, Lavar mimicked the king. He refuses to tell me where he is going at night with my son. If this continues, you and him will be removed from this pride. Please, your highness, he is my responsibility. I will deal with him and make sure this does not happen again. Kill him, maybe. I assure you I will deal with him, your highness. See that you do. The king left, with a low growl escaping his throat. Lavar watched as he left, knowing Z and Zane were about to get it next. Lavar, what are you doing? You can't get away with it just by not talking to me. You answer me right now. I do not have to answer you. You are not my father. Which this little part here comes from another little picture I drew a long time ago, but it's actually Lavar as a cub and Randon as uh, an adolescent quote for that was you are not my father so i wanted to kind of have that somewhere in the story also um a little fun fact recently i just put out a picture of i want to say one of my characters who's related to these two and he has a black part to his mane up at the top and so if anyone's wondering where that comes from it actually comes from lavar's family our father is dead he left me in charge if I was our father, you would not be acting like this. He would not put up with this from you. I don't have the time to put up with these problems, Random. You are the one causing these problems yourself. If you would just listen, it's not hard to do. I would not tell you where we go. It is none of your business, nor that of the king's. Do you want to do you want to or you want to stay alive, don't you? The king is capable of killing you, and he would rather see you dead than his son. Lavar, I heard the argument. Please don't leave. Zuri, I'm sorry. You're sorry about what? I don't want you to get involved in this. You have a great life here. I don't mean to ruin it. None of that means anything to me, Lavar. You are the only one that, who matters. I hate to see you so upset, and I, I hate to see the king so mad at you. I cannot stay. Why? Please, you know you can tell me. I can't. I need to keep you safe. Being with me, you will never be safe. You don't make any sense, Lavar. I really wish you could talk to me. Lavar plopped down onto the rocky ledge. His sad eyes looked out over the horizon as his mind wandered. He could not tell her. She would never agree that he be part of such a group. She was not raised to understand. A part of him wished she could have joined him as a cub. Then she might have been able to understand. But not at this point. He didn't even fully understand. He could not leave the group. If he did, he would be leaving Kylas exposed. He had so much information without being able to say a word. Lavar felt Nazuri lay down beside him, putting her head on his. She said nothing and just stayed with him. Despite her comfort, Lavar felt life was going to change. He did not know if it was for good or ill, but something was about to change. We are getting close to the end. I'd rather stop it here. We will continue tomorrow. Um, we're going to be very close to the end tomorrow. It might be a shorter video. There is a specific spot I want to stop it at. Okay, so tomorrow's video. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.